Hello. Good day, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the vacation. I welcome you all back to campus. This is the second semester of your first year. In this semester two, we are going to continue with our lectures on African studies. So this is African studies, but the course code is AFS102. You are welcome back to campus once again. This week, our focus is going to be on the African family. If you recall, last semester, we looked at kinship or African kinship. That is the broader concept of the African family. But this semester, we are going to look specifically at the concept of the African family. And by the end of this lecture, you are going to be able to define what the family is. When we talk about family, what is it? What is the definition of family? You are also going to be exposed to some basic terms that are used when it comes to the discussion about family. You are going to know the types of family we have in Africa, and then we will conclude with the functions of um, family in Africa. So today, our topic is the African family. Let's begin with the general concept of the African family. So the question is, what is a family? What is a family? There have been several definitions of what a family is. Several anthropologists and sociologists have defined the African family from their own perspective or from their own point of view, based on their own research. So one scholar known as Medoc and the Zanding, they are of the view that when we talk about family, it is a social group the whose members are related by ancestry, marriage, or adoption. And in this social group, the people live together. They undertake economic activity cooperatively or together. And then they care for the young members amongst them. So according to Medak and Zandin, the family is a social group whose members are related either by ancestry, marriage, or adoption. And these people lived together corporately, and then they care for the young people amongst them. Other scholars are also of the view that when we talk about family, it is about psychological bonds. So to them, a family consists of people who are closely knit together. They care for each other, and they respect each other. Another scholar, known as Asimi, it's also of the view that when we talk about family, it refers to a group of sexually interacting adults and their children who occupy statuses, perform certain roles, and are responsible for the economic, social, and religious welfare of one another, especially the children. We can also talk about Krapu, who says that when we talk about family, it is made up of married persons, their children, and other relatives who live together or closer to one another. And they have responsibilities towards one another. And Odetola also says that when you talk about family, it is a group of people who are bound together by sharing certain beliefs. It maintains certain cohesion and solidarity by upholding these beliefs. Now, if you look at the various definitions that are offered by all these scholars I have mentioned, you realize that there are certain consistencies in their definition. In their definition, they look at a family as a group of people who are related, either one way or the other. And this relationship may be based on marriage, adoption, or ancestry. These people also are not just related to each, to each other, but they usually, they usually live together. They have responsibilities and obligations towards each other. They care for the young people, in the, there are young people amongst them. They share certain beliefs, certain values, and they have respect for one another. They cooperate and provide support for each other. So in spite of all the various definitions that have been given, you realize that when we talk about family, it is a group of people 
who are related by each other. They live together, share certain beliefs and values, perform certain roles and responsibilities towards each other. Traditionally, when we look at the African setup, you realize that the family is the basic unit of society. And it's not just in Africa. It prevails in other parts of the world. The family has always been the basic unit of society. But how societies viewed the concept of family over the years has been changing. And this is because society on its own is changing. Society is revolving. And as society is revolving, the traditional concepts that uh, people are used to are also changing. That is why when you come to Africa today, the concept of family, the traditional concept of family in itself is also changing. So some scholars have argued that since society is evolving and society is changing, then there should be some change about the idea of what the African considers as a family. Because when we recognize that there have been changes, then we can properly define the concept of Africa within the time that it is set. Now, when defining family, I have earlier indicated that it is a group of people who live together either by adoption, ancestry, or marriage. But today, when we come to Africa, we realize that the idea of marriage is also changing. Traditionally, when we talk about marriage, it consisted of a man and a woman who have performed the socially acceptable procedure, customs, ceremonies, to live together as a couple. But in today's world, or in today's Africa, the idea of marriage itself is changing. So you find people who are cohabiting together. They may live together for several years, have children, but they have not performed the socially acceptable procedures to call themselves as wife and husband, or for society to recognize that relationship as marriage. Nonetheless, these people are living together and they are forming what we refer to, and they are forming their own families. So behaviors about marriage is changing. People's sexual orientation are changing. Traditionally, marriage was about a man and a woman. But today, they are advocacy for marriage between two men and then marriage between two women. What this means is that the traditional concept of marriage itself is evolving. And this is having a replica effect on the contemporary concept of family. So in today's society, the concept of marriage itself is evolving. And the traditional notion of marriage is losing its essence. Traditionally, marriage was basically between a man and a woman and the families that they come from. But today, there are arguments for the acceptance of marriage between a man and a, another man, for the acceptance of marriage between a woman and a, another woman. Today, people are cohabiting together, and they have not performed the socially acceptable procedures to call themselves as wives and husbands. Yet, they are living together giving birth to children and performing to each other the roles and the responsibilities that husbands and wives are supposed to perform for each other. For this reason, the African view of what a family is, is also gradually evolving or changing. And some scholars are arguing that the way scholars are defining the, uh, the concept of family should expand to include all these complexities that we have in our contemporary societies. Okay, so let's look at the types of families we have in Africa. When you come to Africa, what are the types of family? We are going to concentrate on two basic forms of family in Africa. When you come to Africa today, you will find first the nuclear family. 
And then the second is the extended family. Some scholars have argued that even within these two concepts or types of families, the nuclear and then the extended family, it is not defined in a straight jacket. There are some complexities when it comes to the categorization of these families. Let's look at the nuclear family first. Some scholars have referred to the nuclear family as elementary or simple family. So what is the nuclear family? The nuclear family, as you may know, or some of you may know, refers to the type of family which consists of the husband, the wife, and then the children. And these people live together under the same roof. The children are taken care of by the husband and the wife who are the parents. So when we talk about the nuclear family, it basically be refers to a family that consists of the husband, the wife, and the children who live together in the same household. The nuclear family usually begins with two people who are the husband and the wife. As the years progresses, the nuclear family begins to expand. And the expansion comes about as a means of these two people, the husband and the wife, beginning to have children. So when they have a child, it becomes a family of three. When they have two children, it becomes a family of four. So it continues like that. And then the nuclear family grows in size. But it gets to a point that the family begins to reduce in size again. So at what point does the nuclear family reduce or diminishes in size? This is where the children also begin to get married, leave their parents' home to also start their own families. So at one point, two people, the mother and the father or husband and wife, they come together, they marry, they begin their own families. They have about four or five children. Then as the years progress, these children also get married and they begin to form their own families. As they marry, they leave home. So the size of that particular family reduces. Let's use this as an example. Let's look at the Opoku family. So Mr. Opoku gets married to Mrs. Opoku. Then they have six children. It gets to a point, the firstborn, who is Kwame Opoku, gets married and leaves the house. So it's not left with five children. Isaac Oposu also gets married. It's left with four. Together with the parents, making six. Janet Opoku also gets married. So as the children get married and leave home, the family also diminishes in size. Due to the expansion and the diminishing nature of the nuclear family, some scholars have categorize the nuclear family into two forms. The first is the family of orientation. And then the second is the family of procreation. When you talk about the family of orientation, it refers to the, the family or the nuclear family that a person is born into. So Mr. Opoku and Mrs. Opoku gets married. Then they have a child called Isaac. The family that Isaac is born into it's his family of orientation. Now, the family of procreation, the second one, is the family that a person forms in order for him or her to also produce children and start his or her own family. For instance, in the case of Isaac, his family of orientation is the family that he was born into. When Isaac leaves home, gets married and begins to form his own family. That is what we refer to as the family of procreation. So there are two forms of nuclear family, the family of orientation and then the family of procreation. The family of orientation is the family that a person is born into. When that person is old enough, leaves home, gets married, and then begins to form his or, his or her own family, by giving birth to children. That family becomes the family of procreation. 
It is known as the family of procreation because it is the family that is formed purposely to produce children. And as we all know, in African societies, the responsibility of procreation, the, one of the basic responsibilities of family, or the basic functions of the family, is to procreate and increase the size of the society. Nuclear family as a concept, I have, as I have already indicated, is widespread. You can find it in every society, or most societies, but it is not universal. It varies according to the society that people find themselves in. In some societies, the idea of nuclear family does not even exist. In some societies, it exists, but it's very rare. In others, the nuclear family have no special role in social organization. But in some societies too, the nuclear family is very basic in the social organization of that society. Let's look at the second type of family, which is the extended family. The extended family is or refers to the type of family which consists of series of nuclear families whose members are bound together. They do many things in common. They usually share the same ancestry and they share certain beliefs. The extended family is the type of family that is made up of a number of nuclear families. So for instance, um, Mr. Opoku's family, he gave birth to Janet, um, Isaac, Asantoa, and then Ellen. Isaac leaves home to form his own family. Asantua leaves home to form her own family. Janet does same. So when all these families come together, then we get the idea of the extended family. So it is the coming together of several nuclear families. It is very large. And these people share the same beliefs and the same values. When it comes to Africa and then the European countries, you realize that the African society is more of the extended family system rather than the nuclear family. It is in, in Africa, we believe more in the extended family system or we practice more of the extended family system rather than the nuclear family. Because of that, when people's nuclear families do not feel complete, unless they recognize themselves as part of an extended family. So you may have your wife and your children, but you don't consider only your wife and your children as your own children, your nephews, your aunties, your uncles, who also have their own nuclear families. All of these various or different nuclear families come together and they recognize themselves as one big family. This is unlike what is practiced in the European societies where focus is more on the nuclear family than the extended family. I have already indicated that amongst the, between the nuclear and then the extended family systems that we have in Africa, there are several complexities. The definition is not straight, it's not straightforward or it's not just a straight jacket definition. So when you come to the extended family system, some scholars have referred to another form of family, which they refer to as the composite family. Now, the reason is that the idea of extended family in Africa also has its own complexities. This is because when you come to Africa, our marriages are highly polygamous. We have already studied that in last, uh, during our last semester discussion about kinship. Because the African family is highly polygamous, the extended family itself has its own complexities. There is a tendency that a man will be married to more than one woman. There is also the tendency that, um, the, there is a tendency for divorce, where, but children will also would have been born out of those marriages. So in, 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 a, in, in a system where there is the possibility of stepchildren forming part of a person's family, we refer to that as 
composite family. So when we talk about the composite family, we basically refer to it as a family that is made up of a man, his wives, take note, his wives, and all his children. And all these children include children who he has had from other women. Whether he was married to that woman or that woman was a mistress, or the or whether the woman is still alive or the woman is no longer alive so in the composite family we are referring to the type of family which consists of a man all his wives and all his children including those whose mothers are no longer in a, mar a marital relationship with the man and this is because in several nuclear family systems, there are, there are probabilities or there is the probability that stepchildren will be part of the family. The man may have his own children from another marriage. The woman may have his own children from another marriage. They come together to form their own families. But those children will also be part of that family. And that is what we refer to as the composite family. And because of the possibility of a man having children from uh, with other women or a woman having children with another man, the two of them coming together to get married and then forming another nuclear family, you realize that in most African societies, the nuclear family system is not the ideal type of family that we have. Rather, the composite family is the common type of family systems we have. This means that in most African societies, when you, when you go into the nuclear family system, you realize that the, man, the, the members of that family are not only the children of the man and then the woman, but they are also stepchildren who are part of that family. So apart from stepchildren becoming, or apart from stepchildren being members of a person's nuclear family, there is also the practice of other family members living with, other family members living with a couple. So you may have your niece or your nephew living with you. So, for instance, the Opokus have their own family. Mr. Opoku and the wife, they have their children. In addition to their children, Mr. Opoku's stepchildren are also living with him. Then his niece and nephews are also living with them. All these complexities exist in our nuclear family systems. And the practice where you have a nephew or a niece or any other family member, relative, living with you, is what is referred to as fosterage. What we refer to as fosterage or fostering. And in Africa, it's a very common practice. You find family members living with other family members. Some go there to, for educational purposes. Some are to assist their other family members. But these other uh, relatives who are living with other family members, they also have their own nuclear families. But they are not living with their own original nuclear families, but with other nuclear families within their family setup. Among the Dagomba, for instance, children may leave their parents, their parents' house, then they will go and live with a mother's sister, or they may live with their father's brother. That is an uncle or an aunt. And these relatives are expected to treat the nephews and the nieces as their own children, to care for them as they will for their own children. You, you find the same practice among the Fantis. You find the same practice among the Gans as well. What are the functions of family in Africa? The functions of family may be grouped into two main forms. And these categories 
is according to a scholar known as David. David Kingsley, or Kingsley David. He says that you can categorize the functions of family into two forms. And these forms are essential functions and non-essential functions. So what are the essential functions of the family? To begin with, the family is the basic unit of reproduction and socialization. So it is the duty of the family to reproduce, give birth, to increase the size of the society and the community. It is also their basic function to socialize the children, that is to train the children that they give birth to, teach them the values and the norms of society, bring them to be morally upright, to contribute to the development of the society. It is also the basic responsibility of the family to ensure that they teach the children about their right sexual behaviors. Because of that, there are practices or there are instances where children are not allowed to marry certain people, probably because they are related by blood. So it is the responsibility of the family to regulate the sexual behaviors of their members. It is also the responsibility of the family to provide a home for its members, provide shelter, emotional and, emotional and financial support, and all the other forms of support that you can think of, or all the other forms of support that are necessary for the survival of their members. And what are the non-essential functions of the family? The non-essential functions of society includes um, providing avenue for self-governing units. It is the responsibility of the family to provide an avenue where the members can govern themselves. They also perform religious functions. They teach you. They also perform religious functions for their members. Again, they are to provide education for its members. Healthcare, recreation, entertainment, all of these are non-essential functions of the family. They are also supposed or they provide economic base, economic support for their members. And, and lastly, it is the responsibility of the, of the family to ensure that the members adhere to the social rules and norms in society. So in summary, we have looked at the concepts of the African family. We have said that there are various definitions of what the family is. But in all of these definitions, the family refers to a group of people who are close, who are related to each other, either by blood, adoption, or ancestry. They live together, they perform responsibilities, they share certain beliefs and norms and values. And there are two types of families in Africa, the extended family and then the nuclear family. But these two types of families have their own complexities. So the nuclear family can be subcategorized into family of procreation and family of orientation. At the same time, when you talk about the extended family, we can also look at the composite family. Then lastly, we looked at the functions of society. We talked about uh, the two categories, the essential functions and then the non-essential functions. And these categories was brought out by one scholar known as Kingsley David. Before you leave, I want you to take a look at some self-assessment questions. How will you define the family? What are the types of family that we have? And then how can you differentiate between the essential functions and then the non-essential functions of the family? This is where we bring the lecture to a close. I'll see you next time. Take care and bye-bye.